a shaving, and the shaving is over a period of time, but when it's time to sand or to smooth the wood, you notice that a smooth abrasive or smooth substance is not used, what you use, come on some of you woodworkers, you gotta use something rough in order to make the wood smooth, hallelujah, and you figure, you try to figure out why do I have to go through this, hallelujah, but how many know it's the rough stuff in your life that's causing you to pray? It's the rough stuff in your life that's keeping you seeking after God. It's the rough stuff. I wish I had somebody. Give your name a high five and tell them thank God for my rough stuff. David said it was good that I feel afflicted. Oh, I wish I had somebody look at your neighbor. Tell them what I think about the way God brought me. I gotta praise God. Because if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't be able to enjoy this. Open up your mouth and give God You remember, there's Rachel and there's Leah. And the Bible said Leah was ugly. She was sore to the eye. And the Bible said Rachel was drop dead gorgeous. But she looked good, but she couldn't produce. How many know it's the ugly stuff in your life that's producing the will of God? Oh, I feel like dancing. I feel like shouting. Every time Jacob hooked up with her, something was coming out. I wish I had somebody. Touch your neighbor. Tell them that's why the Bible said, in everything, give thanks. Don't wait till you come out of it. Praise God while you're in it. I was shot. Somebody open up your mouth and get funny. Touch your neighbor. I said, neighbor, you gotta learn how to pray God in it. Shadrach, Meshach, and the Benigo, in the fire, what they loose and they're moving. How many you know that you can tell when God? Is with you because even though I'm going through, I still got my praise. Even though I'm going through, I still got my joy. I know how to wait on the Lord and feel good courage. I wish I had a child. Open up your mouth and give God praise. Even in the midst of trouble, is God before us. He's more than the world against us. Somebody open up your mouth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Y'all sit down for a moment. Come on, get your name. 
said he told him the type of king that Saul was going to be but God is so gracious y'all that even when Saul disobeyed God how to go about offering up the sacrifice the Bible said Samuel told him don't offer up the sacrifice till I get back the Bible said when Saul saw that he delayed his coming and that the people were scattering pastors let me tell you don't allow the people to cause you to react when God expects for you to respond. I can't get no help in here. Yeah, so let me explain it to you. The Bible said that there comes a time when God is about to give himself or reveal himself to the children of Israel once again. And the Bible said that God tells Moses, he said, listen, I want you to speak to the rock. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that the first time that they wanted water, that God tells Moses, take the staff and smite the rock. Yeah, but this time God said, speak to it. But in his frustration, yeah, in his frustration, don't you allow, hallelujah, hallelujah, the devil to frustrate you. Because I want to tell you, the same people that Moses prayed for and the same people, hallelujah, that Moses went to God for, hallelujah, the same people that he missed the promise for. I can't get no help in here. Yeah, yeah. But watch this. What God said was this. He said, Moses, I want to do something different. He said, I told you the first time, smite the rock, and out of the rock came water. He said, but this time, I want them to know that I don't only move through a touch, but I move through a spoken word. Yeah, that's why I want you to speak to it. And some of us are not mature enough to understand if nobody ever laid their hands on me, I can receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save my soul. But what I'm trying to tell you is Saul messed up And even though Saul messed up God gave him another chance He said go kill All the Amalekites And Saul messed that up And so finally God speaks to Samuel He said anoint How to fool the horn with all And go down to Jesse's house He said how long Are you going to cry Over Saul Seeing I have rejected him Pastor Pastor Bishop Stop crying over who left your church Stop crying About who should have stayed When they left Stop looking at who left And start focusing on who stayed I can't get no help in here He said how long 
He said, anoint. Hallelujah. He comes to Jesse. He said, there's a king in your house. And the Bible says, he made Eliab pass. And our Samuel says, surely the Lord's anointed is upon this boy. Now here's the problem. I told you. Here's the problem. We got to do something different. Because Samuel wanted to anoint Eliab, the next king, because he reminded him of Saul. He was head and shoulders above the rest. But God quickly checked Samuel. He said, because I did it like that before. Don't mean I'm going to do it like that again. He said, you're looking on the exterior. He said, but I'm looking at the interior. He said, he looked the part, but he don't have the heart. And I'm telling you, in this season, God's going to use some people that don't look like much. Their heads are not going to be covered. Their skirts are not going to be down to the ankles. And we're going to be surprised that God is going to use some folks that don't look like us. Don't sound like us. I wish I had somebody try. Shift. Yeah, that's coming to ship. Yeah, but the Bible said, finally anoints David. The Bible said for the next five chapters that David is going through a process. He's running from Saul. He got javelins being thrown at him. He's living in caves. He's hiding. But yet throughout this process, he learns how to keep the right attitude. He said, I dare not touch the Lord's anointing. He could have killed Saul twice, but he kept the right attitude. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, when you're going through, keep the right attitude. Don't poke out your mouth. Hallelujah, don't complain. But praise God. I wish I had somebody. Touch your neighbor. As a neighbor, keep praising. The Bible said that David behaved himself wisely because how many of us know that everybody can act right when everything is good but can you act right when the bills are due can you come to church give your tithes when the funds are low you gotta tell the devil we're throwing out I'm gonna scream and shout I wish I had a child open up your mouth and pie receives three anointings. The first anointing that David received is for himself. See, because if what you've got don't work for you, don't try to use it on me. You can't get no help in The first anointing that David get is for himself. Over a period of time, he now receives another anointing. He is now consecrated and installed as the pastor of Judah. Yeah, you know how <laughs> then after a period of time, he is anointed and installed as the chief prelate over all Israel. But all that was his destiny from the start. But it didn't happen to over a process. Yeah, yeah. I was a ask somebody. So let's look at his three anointings. His first anointing is transition. He is anointed for transition. His second anointing, he's still running from Saul. He gets Judah. He's anointed for opposition. And then finally, he's anointed for the position. And so I need you to Gather the acronym Transition T Opposition O Position P Because if you're going to ever get to the top You're going to have some transition Oppositions Before you get the position I wish I had somebody Touch your neighbor Say neighbor Touch your neighbor Touch your neighbor Touch your neighbor Touch your neighbor Touch 
somebody, what's your name? But you know you won't have to go through something, baby. Don't say that you just gonna become what God called you. Somebody gonna hurt you. Somebody gonna stab you in the back. You gonna have to go as high. You gonna have to learn how to trust God. I wish I had somebody. Tell your name, excuse me. I've been anointed for the time, but it's gonna take a process for me to get there. I, I promise y'all I'm coming, I'm coming. Jesus had to go through a process. The Bible says that the angel sent word to Mary that she's going to have a child. After the child was born, the Bible said, and the child grew and increased. Process. I want to know why we try to make it without process. We hear nothing else about Jesus to the age of 12. Yes. And at the age of 12, finally, they leave the convocation. Yes. And Joseph and Mary is looking for him. Yes. And they think he's among his relatives. Yes. And when they searched and couldn't find him, they decided to go back to the temple. And they find him at the temple, not only asking questions, but answering questions. Yes. And the Bible said, Joseph said, boy, don't you know we've been looking for you? He said, you couldn't have been looking for me. Don't you know it's time that I be about my father's business? How many know how destiny was kicking in, but it wasn't time? God, God, God. Yeah. See, that's the problem. That's the problem with some of us. Because we can exalt, we think the Lord called us the pastor. God made pastors, not people. God, we should have a charge. He said, it's time that I be about my father's business. Joseph said, okay, son, come on home and let me teach you how to make some tables and some chairs and some wooden lap posts. You know them carpenters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because Joseph didn't quite understand. So here it is. We had nothing else about Jesus for 18 years. And at the age of 30, because 30 is the number of maturity, at the age of 30, he shows up at the joint requesting to be baptized of his cousin John. But how many know that for 18 years, he's somewhere being processed, though he was a son, yet he learned obedient through the things he suffered. He was somewhere suffering, learning how to obey God. So when he step out, you don't have to make mistakes. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, everything that you go, God, feel like this. Everything that you're going through is just rehearsal. I was a high somebody. Give your neighbor a high five. Say, neighbor, learn to make your mistakes. Hallelujah in rehearsal. Misquote your line in rehearsal. Hallelujah. I was a high somebody. Leave your wardrobe at home. Rehearsal, but when it's time for the performance, there's no room for error. I wish I had somebody touch your neighbor. Said, Neighbor, we've been in rehearsal, but get ready. The show is about to go on. He's the author and the finisher. He wrote the script that you're about to start in. I wish I had somebody. Touch your name. I said, name. Process. So the Bible said that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. My process has been ordered by God. Yeah, yeah. Before I formed. will help you choose me. I knew abandonment will help you choose me. I knew 
I ordered by the Lord. When he stepped out, I stepped in. I wish I had somebody. And when I walk, that's why the Bible says we ought to walk as he walked. I wish I had somebody. Touch your neighbor. Tell him if you do what he did, you will have what he had. That's why he told him, go down in Jerusalem. Do you be a dude with power from on high? He said, don't you leave here till you get what I got. I wish I had Hold up your mouth and tell them step, neighbor, step, step, step. Give some a hot top and tell them, neighbor, don't quit now. Keep stepping, keep stepping, keep moving, keep going toward it, keep progressing, keep stepping. Somebody left your hand, hold up your mouth and bless them. level is lower than this level. But if I'm going to get on that level, I'm going to have to take some steps. See, some of us try to change level, but we don't want to go through the necessary steps. I can't get no help in here. Still holding bitterness. Come on. Hovering stuff in your heart. Yeah. It's going to cause you to miss some steps. Come on, we should have somebody. But if you won't go to another level, there's some steps that you're going to have to take. But watch this, here. That bless my heart. The Lord says, son, I want you to know that steps don't only go up, but steps go forward. I wish I had somebody. Touch your name. Tell them I'm on my way up. And I'm on my way forward. He brought them up of Egypt. I wish I had somebody. Touch your neighbor. Tell them you're about to go to another level. But you're going to have to take the necessary step. The steps of the good man are all now this kind of this kind of hard to demonstrate because just two steps but have you ever been going up some steps and you tripped in the middle don't he fall he shall not utter in other words I fell on the fifth step I could have fell all the way back down to the bottom but I was not Cast down, and right where I am, he's gonna lift me up. I wish I had somebody. Touch your name. Tell him what God said is get up and keep stepping. Get up and keep going. Get up and keep going. Get up. I wish I had somebody to touch your name. Tell him, get up and keep stepping. Keep moving. Don't let it stop you. Don't let it hit you. I wish I had a child that would jump to your feet. Lift your hand. Open up your mouth. And praise your God. Let me tell you this. I'm going to try to quit. What, Bishop? Some of us don't realize is that our blessing, our miracle, and our healing got a motion sensor on it. Can't get no help in here. You ever got to a door that had a motion sensor that seemed like it was shut in your face? And you stood there waiting for the door to open, but nothing happened until you stepped towards the door. Touch your name. Tell them we walk by faith. And I come to tell somebody, when you start stepping, God is going to start opening some doors. But you got to get from where you are and move towards where you're going. Push your name a little bit. Tell them, come on. Get the stepping. Get the moving. Keep it moving. Keep stepping. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Look at your neighbor. Tell them, keep stepping. Tell them, there's some more 
steps. That tells the neighbor there's some more steps that we have to take. But see, you gotta learn how to be an encourager. say this first and then I'll say that pastors hear me remember when Samuel got ready to anoint the next king the Bible said Eliab came by God said no he ain't the one but well, Samuel said this keep stepping <laughs> next boy came by God said keep stepping third boy came by he said, keep stepping. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. Don't you anoint nobody that God doesn't appoint. Amen. Giving them a title ain't going to keep them in your church. Oh. Oh. I wish I had somebody. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you got to have a heart enough to say, keep stepping. You don't come to church all the time. Keep stepping. You don't pay your tithes. Keep stepping. You don't come to prayer. Keep stepping. I wish I had somebody. Look at your neighbor and tell them you got to keep it moving. spoke to Elizabeth, John said, let me help this boy out. He don't understand that he can't come till I come. So John leaps. John starts stepping in the womb. Jesus said, I agree with you. He starts taking it in the womb. Oh, I wish I had somebody touch your neighbor. Hallelujah. And so what John said is, I'm going to push him out. Listen, somebody might be in front of you, but you don't want them to be left. So what you got to say to them is, come on, man, keep stepping. Keep moving. Because I can't get mine till you get yours. I wish I had somebody touch your neighbor. It's a neighbor. It's step by step. It's line upon line. And precept upon precept. It's here 